Are you tired of living the symptoms of Sjogren's syndrome? What if I tell you that there are new and promising treatments on the horizon? In this video, I will reveal the latest breakthroughs in Sjogren's syndrome treatments, which are inspired by my latest blog on my website. As you may know, Sjogren's syndrome is a chronic autoimmune disorder affecting millions of people. The lack of effective treatments has made it challenging to manage the symptoms. However, recent advances have led to the development of more focused therapy. Let's dive in to some of the potential new treatments for Sjogren's syndrome. Rheumatologistoncall.com Based on the latest research, I am going to share with you some exciting new treatments that are being proposed for Sjogren's syndrome. Ian Alumab. One potential new treatment for Sjogren's syndrome is using Ian Alumab. This monoclonal antibody targets and blocks the activity of a protein called B cell activated factor. BAF or BAFF plays an important role in activating and surviving of the B cells. These are a type of white blood cells that produce antibody and they are found to be high in patients with Sjogren's syndrome. Also, in patients with Sjogren's syndrome, there is an overproduction of this BAFF or BAF, which leads to the activation of B cells that attack the body's tissue including the salivary and lacrimal glands. By blocking the activity of BFF, Ian Alumab can potentially reduce the activation and survival of these B cells and thus will reduce inflammation and the tissue damage. New research showed that using Ian Alumab to treat Sjogren's syndrome might be a promising way to improve the disease. A recent study published in 2022 that involved 293 patients supported these promises. In this study, 190 patients were randomized to receive this new drug for 24 weeks. At the end of this study, the patients that received this new drug improved their inflammation and salivary gland production, improving dryness. The medication was well tolerated by patients. Currently, there are many centers in the United States that are recruiting patients to see if the results of this initial study can be reproduced further. I will leave a link in the description of this video for the centers that are actively enrolling patients. So you can talk to your rheumatologist to see if they can refer you to be included in the study. In addition to Enelumab, there are several new treatments for Sjogren's syndrome that has been investigated. Rituximab. Rituximab is a monoclonal antibody directed against CD20 cell surface marker that is located on B cells, and it has been extensively studied as a treatment option. The findings are variable. Rituximab showed promising results in treating, for example, lung disease, but when it came to dryness and fatigue, was not able to show improvement in those symptoms. Some researchers found that rituximab is helpful for parotid swelling, vasculitis, and peripheral neuropathy. Tumor necrosis factor inhibitors. Now, TNF-alpha inhibitors are medications that are used to decrease inflammation in patients with rheumatoid arthritis and psoriatic arthritis. Medications like infliximab or etanercept were also tried for Sjogren, but with mixed results. Some patients might actually benefit if they have inflammatory arthritis that is causing swelling in the joints and if they have elevated markers of inflammation. Belimumab. Belimumab is a medication used in patients with lupus. This medication was also tried in patients with Sjogren, and it showed just modest effect. The patients that tried this medication had a small improvement in dryness, but fatigue was not improved. Belimumab was helping patients that had parotid swelling, joint pain, and high rheumatoid factor levels. Abatacept. 
Abatacept is a medication commonly used in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Although initially this medication gave patients hope, the effect of this drug was not sustained in time. Tocilizumab. Tocilizumab is an IL-6 inhibitor that is used commonly in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Unfortunately, this medication was not helpful for patients with Sjogren's syndrome. In conclusion, the development of new treatments like Yenalumab offers hope for improvement in the management of Sjogren's syndrome. For more information on Sjogren's syndrome, you should check out my other educational videos on this YouTube channel, but also read my blog on Rheumatology Stone Call website. If you need help, don't hesitate to contact me. Rheumatologist on Call is a telemedicine practice serving patients in multiple U.S. states. Thank you for watching and remember to share your experience with me and also like, comment and subscribe for more videos. Rheumatologistoncall.com